In 2012, um, food insecurity here in our community became, um, became, just came on my, my radar, and I really started to look at what was happening and was kind of taken aback that there were kids right here in our community that were going hungry on the weekends. So after a long time of talking about it, Shelby on a walk one day finally said, well, why don't we just do something? Do it on our own mm -hmm. and dive in. And 10 days later, we served our first 50 children at Adams Elementary. I read an article about a national organization that does, um, provides weekend food to kids. And so after reading that, it just kind of struck me as odd because it identified some of the, or the areas that they had cha chapters of this organization, different cities. And a few of them, I thought, really? You wouldn't think that they would have that kind of an issue? I wouldn't think we would have that kind of an issue. And I just started looking from there. What we do is we go out every Thursday or Friday and provide them with a bag filled with non-perishable, easy-to-repair food items. We, a lot of our kids are living in some really dire circumstances, so we don't assume that they have access to can openers or stoves. Uh, so everything that we give them is they have to be able to open and prepare on their own. Jess identifies the area, so that's her functionality is she gets a list from either, you know, food bank, uh, Fresno Hunger Count, churches that are depressed areas. Mm -hmm. And then she'll drive the area for months before to see what it looks like, what type of parents are picking up kids, are parents picking up kids, and then she'll identify it. And then she'll go and break down, is the school administration supportive and on board? Right. Because that's really key. And then she'll pick a site and we'll, we'll pop right on in. Schools are an easy place for us to be able to identify our students. It would be a lot more difficult for us to go into um, just the neighborhoods and the communities and be accepted there, I think. And, and so, logistics. Like logistics, mm -hmm. you have 200 kids at one location at any right. one time. We can't get 200 kids to come here at any one time. There's transportation. They can't ride buses. They're young. Right. So it, it gets them all in one location really quickly. Right. And with both of the school sites that we're working at, their administration is unparalleled. I mean, they mm -hmm. know their students like the back of their hand. So they are re a really good resource for us when, because a lot of our students are very transient, mm -hmm. they are, we have a lot of turnover in the children that are in our program, but they know who these kids are and they're able to really identify who has the greatest need and get those kids to us. Every single time you touch these kids with this bag of food, they feel empowered. Mm -hmm. Test scores are better, school attendance is better, these schools want us to come back because the day of our delivery, they have 100% attendance from this group of kids, mm -hmm. which they never have that any other day. Um, we, have, we have children who are, they'll take their bag and they will participate in a family meal together with their other siblings, mm -hmm. where they never had that opportunity before because they didn't have food. have three kids and I have nieces and nephews and friends through my house all the time and listening to that constant refrain of you know opening the cabinet there's nothing to eat I'm starving and yet I have Costco sitting in the pantry waiting for you and you know you don't know what that even means and thankfully I don't know what that means um, but it just really resonated with me that I can drive 10 minutes away from my home and there are and be in touch with kids that really do understand when they say I'm starving, I'm really hungry, mm -hmm. and their pantry is empty, and that just didn't sit well for me. For me, it's personal. Um, I grew up um, in a household that had financial insecurities, and uh, when Jessica started talking about this, it I immediately went back to that feeling of um, lack of focus. I couldn't study well. Just general grumpiness because I was hungry. And I was old enough to be able to fend for myself, but I wasn't six and five and seven like these kids are. And I think that's what made us connect mm -hmm. and be able to connect in our community is that the need is strong, right. the need is great, and it's, it's personal to both of us.
Admittedly, when we went out that first week, we didn't know what we were doing. We really didn't. I mean, we thought this is going to be great. We're going to go out and serve these sweet kids. And we were asked more often than not, will you be back next week? And oftentimes we would say, yeah, of course we'll be back next week. And they scoffed at that because they're used to people stepping in and stepping out. Yeah. And we left there and we both were like, oh no, what did we just do? Because we, we did, there was no longer an option not to go back. We were scared. It was scary walking out of there because I think we just thought we were going to feed some kids. And that was the goal. We were just going to give them food and move on. They've changed us way more than we've changed them. Yeah. For yeah. sure. We're not going anywhere. 